I apologize if I seem a little bit off today. If I sound sick, it's because I actually am sick, but I'm still making a video. You're welcome. This is the Sony 24mm f1.4 G Master. I've been using this lens on my a7 III pretty much exclusively for the past four weeks. I'm gonna talk about basics. We're talking about video autofocus, bokeh, build quality, and lots of examples of both photo and video. Basically, the juicy stuff that most people just wanna see. This is my first G Master lens. If you're not familiar with what a G Master lens is, you've probably heard of a Canon L lens. They're best of the best. Well, this is Sony's version of that, the G Master series. This is the 24mm f1.4. The G stands for the greatest because it's better than every other lens out there. That's obviously not true. So let's quickly talk about build quality and design. The big thing about this lens is its size. It's incredibly small for what it is. For an f1.4 lens, full frame, you normally have a much, much bigger lens than this. Sony did an incredibly good job at designing this lens and making it as small as it is. To give you an idea of just how small this is, this is the 85 mil. This is the 24 mil. They're nearly the same size. They're also very similar when it comes to weight. So needless to say, this is a small lens. If we just go over the design of the lens, it's obviously made of metal. A little bit of a nicer finish than any other Sony lenses that I have probably because it's a G Master. It's a metal finish on it, it's very smooth, but it's also slightly textured. It has a uh, lens button on it, which you can assign to do whatever you want. I have mine assigned as a focus hold. So when I'm shooting and I click and, well, when I get my focus, I click and hold that, and then the focus stays locked on that until I release that button. You can assign that to do whatever you want. A lot of people have it assigned to eye autofocus as well. Something that's a little bit different to other lenses that I own, this one has a little button on the, uh, the lens hood there. So you click and hold the button, and then that releases the lens hood. None of my other Sony lenses have that. In fact, none of the other lenses that I've ever owned had that. Maybe that's just the G Master thing, I'm not too sure. It means the lens hood can't come off accidentally, which is a nice thing. It is, of course, a focus by wire, meaning all the focus is done electronically. There is no mechanical focus physically inside the lens here. That being said, of all the Sony lenses I own, it's by far the smoothest. Uh, very, very nice resistance. It's not too firm, it's not too loose. It's very smooth all the way around, it's really nice. It has an aperture ring on here, which means you can control the aperture on the lens itself. It's also declicked. So right now you can hear here, I'm turning the aperture ring and there's no noise or no click at least. If I click the little switch on the side, now it's a clickable aperture ring. I've heard some people say that this moves a little bit too easily. It's really firm on my version and I, I really like it unclicked to be honest or declicked. Uh, to be able to change that quickly and easily on the lens is really nice. Here's an example of how that works actually when you shoot in video. I have the ISO set to auto here. Shutter speed's at 2000 so I can expose f1.4 correctly here. I'm just gonna turn the, uh, the aperture ring and let ISO auto adjust itself so you can see how the background will change. So we're gonna go from f1.4, f2, f3.2. You see how the background's now coming in focus. f6.3, f10. 16. Let's go back. So you see how the background gets its blur? It's pretty cool. A little bit different. Not a lot of lenses have that. It's really nice. So this is an f1.4, which means a couple of things. The low light ability of these lens is gonna be way, 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 way up there. This is gonna be among one of the best lenses you can probably get when it comes to low light. f1.4 is incredibly low. It lets in a ton of light, which means that when you're shooting in a low light environment, this is gonna be a good lens to use. It also means bokeh, or bokeh, whatever you wanna call it, but there's lots and lots of bokeh. You're gonna get some serious background separation with this. That shallow depth of field that everybody wants, you're gonna get it really good with this. The background literally melts to nothing. All the focus goes on you or whatever you're focusing on and the background just is like gone, disappeared. The negative of shooting at f1.4 is that your depth of field is teeny, 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 tiny. There's such a small range of focus that you have to get it dead on, otherwise it will not be in focus. Here's some examples of me using f1.4 for both photo and video. If you're thinking about using this lens for YouTube videos and you want to know how much background or lack of you'll have at f1.4 and how the focus will work with talking head segment videos for video, this is that. This is what it looked like. Maybe not outside in the freezing cold, but you get my point. So yeah, it's kind of hard to focus exactly on everything. I'm looking at the screen here and not everything is in focus in my face because f1.4 is so tiny. You have such a small window of focus in f1.4 you can kind of tell that from this. If we crank this up a little bit, let's go f2.8. 
and then adjust to get my exposure back. You can see now that you have a lot more in focus on my face. It can hold focus on my face a lot easier. And this might be a little bit better for YouTube talking head segments, if that's what you're looking to do. Autofocus. As with any other Sony lens I've owned, the autofocus on this is very, very good. It's quick, it's accurate. When it gets locked on, when it finds its focus, it stays locked on, it stays accurate, and that's really nice. All right, here's an autofocus test out and about in the field, not literally a field, but somewhere where you're actually gonna realistically use this camera, not in a studio where it's all controlled. So, autofocus, f2.8 is what I have the lens set to. I'm just gonna run around and do some autofocus tests and see how it handles. Don't know if that worked, but we'll see you later on. As I said earlier, f1.4 is extremely shallow. Now it will accurately lock on at f1.4. If you move around slightly, if you move further forwards, further back, your focus is no longer gonna be in focus. That's not a problem with the lens, that's just a thing about shooting at f1.4. I would also say that it does seem to be when you're shooting at something like f1.4, f2, the autofocus is a little bit slower, not like hugely, but it's definitely noticeable compared to if you're shooting at f8. My guess for this is because it's such a narrow, depth of field, even slight movements will throw it off and that's kind of what I think is happening. That's just my assumption, I could be completely wrong, but kind of makes sense to me. So the sharpness of this lens, something that everyone always strives for in a lens, especially people new to photography and video, they want the absolute sharpest image they can possibly get. So sharpness is good for some people, some people don't like it. This is an incredibly sharp lens, so sharp, painfully sharp actually sometimes. And what I mean by that is it could be unflattering. So. If you look at this photo here, you can see every minute little detail in my skin. But we can't hold that against the lens. The lens is super sharp. If I have bad skin, that's not the lens's fault, is it? That's my fault. But anyway, yeah, this lens is incredibly sharp. Here's a picture of a brick wall, shot at f1.8, and then zoomed in. And then here's the same wall at f4, and then zoomed in. And then the same thing at f8, and then zoomed in so you can make your own assumptions over which is sharper, but it's definitely a little bit sharper, higher up at wide open at f1.4. It's not quite as sharp as it is at those higher apertures. The minimum focus distance of this, and what I mean by that is how close you can be to a subject is about 24 centimeters. So that's roughly, I'm gonna say about that, just as a rough idea. It's not like macro close, but you can definitely get right up there. If you used crop mode, clear image zoom as well, you can get even further and then you're kind of in macro territory. So it's a 24 mil, which is a really, really nice cinematic kind of focal length. And because of that, it's actually a really nice gimbal lens. So I've used it on my Weeble Lab. It balances without any problems whatsoever. It's not too heavy, so it goes on there nice and easy, balances with no problems. A lot of people are gonna ask, is this a lens you can use for vlogging? Typically, I prefer to use something like a 16, 1635 is what I'm shooting on right now, but I tried this out for vlogging and I was actually pleasantly surprised. With the background separation on there, it actually makes for a really, really nice vlogging lens. Uh, here's some examples. So this is what vlogging with the 24 f1.4 looks like on the Sony a7 III. I apologize if the frame rate looks a little bit weird. I have the shutter speed cranked because it's actually at f1.4 and I didn't bring an ND filter. So. This is what vlogging looks like. It's a little bit tighter than what I'd prefer. I love a 16, it doesn't look too bad. I do have it at arm's reach here. Obviously there is no optical image stabilization built into the lens, but with the Sony a7 III, you have IBIS, so that kind of works a little bit better. As you can see, background just disappears to nothing. Really nice. So if you're happy with 24 mil as your vlogging focal length, then you will really like this, as long as you can deal with the shake. It's not too bad. Just nothing in the background, just disappears to nothing. So nice. I just mentioned that this doesn't have any optical image stabilization built into it. Most cameras now, like the a7 III, have IBIS built into them, so that really isn't that much of a big deal. Also, if you're using a stabilizer, it really isn't that much of a big deal whatsoever. Here's an example of me using this with a stabilizer on the a7 III. If you're thinking about vlogging on a stabilizer, like the Weevil Lab, with a 24 mm high f2 running, this is what that would look like too. 
Oh man, I gotta get back to the gym. Whew. Probably a bit smoother than handheld, but yeah, this is what that would look like in the snow. So what will I be using this lens for and how does it fit into my current lineup of lenses? Because it's kind of a weird one. I have the 1635, the 55, the 85, the 7200, and now the 24. So it's definitely a weird one, doesn't fit quite in there as easily as you would think. But I'm thinking that I'm gonna use this as a gimbal lens. For weddings, anytime I'm on a gimbal, 24 mil is a really, really nice field of view. I really do like wide on a gimbal. It's my preference for shooting with a gimbal. Uh, and at f1.4, that's nice. It means I can use it in low light. I can crop in with crop mode and still have really nice bokeh in the background, really nice background separation, and nice shallow depth of field. So I think it's gonna be a really good gimbal lens. You can go in front of things and have the background all blurred out or have the foreground all blurred out and then the background's all in focus. So it'll be really nice on a gimbal moving around. I also think this will be a really good travel lens and you might disagree with me. My personal choice for a travel lens right now is a 1635 f4 Sony. But since I've had this on my camera exclusively and kind of forced myself to use just this so I can get used to it and make this review honestly, I really like it. I think just the f1.4 aspect of it is what's making me really like it compared to f4 on the 1635. But 24 is like right in the middle of where I want to use it anyway. It's a little bit tighter than what I normally use for shooting myself, but I can stretch my arm a little bit more and that'll suffice. But for the f1.4, the low light abilities uh, and just the cinematic look of it, I think I'm going to try this on my next trip, which is actually coming up, two trips coming up in the next couple of months. I think I'm gonna use this, try it out. Also, astrophotography, a big thing that I wanted to buy this lens for, really, I'm very interested in astrophotography. It's extremely well regarded as an astrophotography lens. One big thing they've also said with this lens, and you can look at a ton of reviews that also say this, when you look in the corners of some images of astrophotography, the, the stars don't tend to be quite as star-shaped. They kind of expand or they become more crosses. Uh, and with this lens, the stars in the middle are exactly the same as your stars at the edge. So that's a really nice thing about this lens. So I'm very much looking forward to using this for some astrophotography once we get some clear sky. So what could you compare this lens to? Well, there is one other lens out there that is a direct competition to this lens and it's the Sigma 24mm f1.4. Now the Sigma weighs about 50% more than this. This is like 450 grams, I think, and the Sigma is about 650 grams. So it weighs a lot more and it's also a little bit bigger. G Master, this lens is $1,400 as US at the time of me making this video, and the Sigma is $950. So quite a big difference in price. However, I did so much research, an obscene amount of research, and everything pointed to this lens. The autofocus on this is a lot better than the Sigma. A lot less noise when it comes to the autofocus, the astrophotography aspects of this, and just the overall image quality is better on this lens, which is why I ended up going for this one. You don't have to take my word for it, but I did do a ton of research, so just kind of giving you the too long didn't read. And finally, I'll leave you with some B-roll with this lens, just in my little studio space here. So yeah, here's that coming up. Appreciate you watching today. If you like this video, or you know someone else that might like this video too, consider sending them the link. Maybe they'll want to subscribe as well. All right, appreciate you watching. See you guys in the next one. Here's that B-roll. If you could have seen the setup I used for some of today's segments, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, look, it's big, got a monitor on top, I have to put the mic to the side, and it's big, and Sony, give us a flip screen. And I know the A6400 has one, but on like the A7S3, give us a flip screen, please. Okay, thanks, bye.